do 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 do. You know, there's not much more destructive to your health than staying up till six o'clock in the morning every night. <laughs> kind of wear you out. And specifically, yes, this is a video about field theory. However, I shouldn't say theory because it's certainly not so field theory at all. It's a field reality. Um, most people are not interested in field theory. However, I always thought it was amazing how many people were fundamentally interested in field theory. The, uh, the human desire for consumption of uh, knowledge and fundamental truth regarding cosmic mechanics is rather astounding to me because the absolute nature of most human beings is to either get rich or get laid or get rich and laid at the same time. And you know, everything is about uh, the ancient uh, Greeks would call it feeding the oral anal axis. If you actually can't eat it or make love to it, you don't really care about it, which would, of course, be the definition of an animalistic or bestial nature, which, of course, defines most of humanity, by and large, to be certain. Um, <laughs> let's first start off before we actually get into the nitty-gritty of this, is that we first have to define that uh, current modern-day science taken as a generalization, and of course a generalization exists because it is generally true. The one thing I actually hate about most people making ill-gotten statements is that they will make a uh, exception to what is generally a rule. It's like, well, this isn't true. It's like, yeah, well, I'm making a general statement about what is generally true. Regarding specifically so science, is that scientists today are not actually scientists in the hardcore platonic ancient Greek method. Of course, all of scientific methodology came out of uh, Pythagoras, Plato, Aristotle, Plotinus, Numenius, Demetius, Proclus, Syrianus, on and on and on. All these great uh, Platonists and Neoplatonists. Uh, these people are not scientists. They're mathematicians. And fundamentally, a mathematician cannot relate to anything that cannot be quantified. Quantum, quantified. Can you see those words? Quantum, quantified. This is where quantum mechanics came from. These people are not scientists. They're mathematicians. And they don't believe in anything that you can't count. Okay? Imagine someone uh, who is an accountant to is uh, given a job to uh, give a uh, analysis of something that has no quantification or parameters. They, of course, would pull their hair out and immediately commit suicide. This is what a modern scientist is. They're not actually scientists. And I'm not against math at all, but they're mathematicians. And these people have tried to quantify everything, but a field has no quantity. It cannot be quantified. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. We first have to dismiss the uh, cult of scientism, or what I call it, uh, the cult of bumping particles. It is specifically nihilistic and atomistic. It denies any substrate to uh, anything that uh, does not have a Cartesian value. This cannot uh, pass the muster or the filter of a modern-day scientist who is not a scientist at all, but a mathematician. A true scientist is interested in nature. Nature is both existential and it is noetic. These are two sides of the same coin. Um, this is also uh, the antinomies of human existence that the Greeks so accurately and well defined of uh, the ignorances of human beings. On the one side you have a nihilist, on the other side you actually have a creationist. You have two sides of the flip coin that can never see the center of anything. But specifically regarding uh, field theory, most people don't understand, and they're going to think, you are going to think, that this is a distinction without a difference, but a magnet does not have a field around it. A magnet does not have a field. And of course, well, sure it does. I mean, if I get a piece of a ferrous material close to it, it will accelerate towards that, or magnets, quote-unquote, repel, or they attract. But uh, it's not a locus in, or to, or of the magnet. As said... The devil is in the details, and the devil is regarding specifically magnetic objects with a Cartesian parameter, say one inch by one inch, a neodymium, myron, boron. Um, there is no field around that magnet. It is a pressure mediation disturbance of the aether. Um, there is not a field or something. There is no substance of a field, obviously so. But uh, once again, I know you're going to think that this is a distinction uh, without a difference. So if we actually interject a strong magnetic uh, field in any particular place, then we'll have uh, 
a value that uh, corresponds with the Maxwellian field equations of an effect over a period of time with a certain vector. We have talk of about magnetic lines of force. Now, a line is a human conceptual abstraction, and uh, force has no Cartesian reality. To say force is like saying a wave. When we say force, we force of what? There's no such thing as a force, goddammit. Well, sure there is. No. A force is of something upon something else, or something as defined extrinsically and uh, by denotation rather than connotation as something that is extending outwards to the plane of rest or inertia or true potential or power. A magnet does not have a field. What a magnet does is it uh, initiates both centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence in line with the uh, field coherency which defines a magnet as pertains to the parameter. And it's certainly not space because space is not a thing, as Tesla so famously said, and accurately as well as many others, including the ancient Greeks. Space has absolutely no goddamn properties. The notion that space is somehow bending or curving along the lines of the asshole idiot Einstein who thought that uh, bodies caused a warpage of space. And uh, this is like a depression in the fabric of space-time. This, is, of course, is an absurd quantification postulated out of pure conceptual nonsense uh, from uh, quantum physicists who are by definition mathematicians. They think in terms of lines of force. Well, a line is a conception and force itself is no different than saying a wave. I love it when people in physics and field theory talk about waves and you should always say, well, wave of what, goddammit? A wave of what? Um, specifically regarding light and magnetism, I'm going to discuss uh, light here in a second, is that all phenomena of light and magnetism, every observable phenomena that we've ever observed of light and magnetism can be logically explained a la Tesla, Steinmetz, and Platonic logic pertaining the aether. It cannot be explained, however, using the irrational concepts and uh, Cartesian atomism of particle uh, quantum theorists who are by definition mathematician. And a mathematician fundamentally is somebody who only believes in things that can be counted, divided, sub, uh, square rooted, locked into an equation, but a field has no value by which it can be quantified, much less plugged into equation. All field equations, like I said, are effects over a period of time at a certain vector. And of course these are effects are measured in joules or watts, energy, or change of one thing upon another. But they have never, nor science itself, and science today is not real science in the platonic sense, it is mathematics. And I'm not against mathematics, but mathematics cannot come to grips with a noetic principle which has absolutely no Cartesian value. This is fundamentally metaphysics. And I don't mean metaphysics in the current connotation, which is New Age crap, but in the absolute Platonic and Pythagorean denotation of something which is a substrate to phenomena, to particleism, to atomism, to existential, empirical, psychophysical, and phenomenal uh, uh, principles which can be quantized and counted. And this is where science, of course, falls apart. It has no conception of field or field theory, nor the nature of the reality of cosmic mechanics as it pertains to those thereof. Um, also, too, uh, going off of uh, what we know about magnetism, well, what I know about magnetism anyway, <laughs> um, I said a magnet does not have a field around it. And before you call me a heretic for saying that yet again, you'll have to think about that, and then you'll actually come to a reality. If you've got five brain cells, and you give it ten seconds of thought, you'll understand that a magnet does not have a field around it. It, by its very nature of field coherency, and what we call the Lamour frequency, or geomagnetic precession, is field uh, incommensurability, or this uh, field coherency, which is the only thing that defines a magnet, initiates a perturbation of coherency in the shape of a conjugate reality. And the conjugate reality of uh, cosmic mechanics, and this is the most fundamental secret of the universe, is we have a toroidal geometry of force and motion or centrifugal divergence, and we have a, a centripetal geometry of the uh, hyperboloid or the hourglass shape of increasing uh, inertia 
force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. Everything is force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. The subunits uh, of those is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Uh, dielectric permeability and magnetic, uh, per, uh, excuse me, dielectric permeability and magnetic permittivity, excuse me. Uh, I should stop staying up till 6 o'clock in the morning every <laughs> um, Light, additionally so, and this is uh, everything modern quantum is based upon, uh, das Lichtwand, or uh, either a wave particle duality, which is the most absurd ass. If alien, if advanced aliens were to land tomorrow, they would laugh their goddamn asses off on the notion of a wave particle duality, quote unquote. A wave is not a thing. Mother Nature has nothing to do with a duality. A duality is a human concept of something that conflicts with something. When scientists say that there is a duality in nature. That is like saying Mother Nature is like some crazy chick that screams in the mirror about how much she hates herself. There are no dualities in nature. The only duality is within the ignorant minds of uh, mental midget knuckle-dragging subhuman morons that we call scientists today. There's no such thing as a wave-particle duality. But light is not something that moves nor is emitted. Light, by its very definition, to apply platonic logic, is only a concept. We only define light by what it does, but never by what it is. So therefore, we are speaking not about light, but rather illumination. Light doesn't exist from a platonic logical analysis. Only illumination, and this abstraction of illumination, is only as meant a disturbance of X. And that X is certainly not space, rather the ether. Light doesn't move, for example. When someone says the speed of light, they're talking about a rate of propagation. And the rate of propagation is a propagation of a transverse uh, uh, field uh, perturbation. In this case, uh, the coaxial, whether it be longitudinal, uh, excuse me, uh, linear polarization or otherwise of a, a transverse uh, coaxial circuit which is light as transverse electromagnetic longitudinal pulse perturbations along the dielectric line of emission something that actually has a transverse a spatial component and this of course is frequency or wavelength must uh, fall within a rate of propagation of uh, the limit of perturbation of the fundamental ether itself and this of course is what we call C or the speed of light, but it's not a light, not a speed at all, rather a rate of propagation. Um, all the things that scientists have never been able to explain, like how light is able to not break the, uh, uh, the law of conservation of energy by speeding up after it leaves glass, see light slows down as it enters glass, but it doesn't slow down. This is a dielectric uh, primitivity issue where the capacitance of the glass slows the light down, but it doesn't slow down. But the notion that it somehow speeds back up again, like it steps on the gas pedal, of course, would break the law of conservation. Because modern science is atomistic by its very nature, and you cannot explain light speeding back up again after it leaves glass by using an atomistic view of reality as espoused by modern science, who are, by definition, mathematicians and goddamn atomists. However, all phenomena of light, and there is no wave-particle duality, explaining that is rather simple, save for another place and time, which I've actually already explained in other videos, can only be explained by the aether. Absolutely everything can be explained by uh, Maxwellian, Tesla, uh, Faraday, and the platonic aether. You cannot explain instantaneous action at a distance, the speeding up of light, quote unquote, as it leaves. There's a thousand things. I've got a list of like nearly 50 really important ones. Can never be explained by atomistic uh, um, views of the nature of cosmic mechanics as it pertains to the nature and uh, composition, if you want to say composition of light. It's absolutely impossible. So all phenomena of light can only be explained logically via Platonic, Tesla, Steinmetz, and uh, Aether models of the universe. It can never be explained via moving particles or waves. And waves are not things. Force is not a thing either. A shadow is not a thing. A shadow is a privation and absence of light. These are human abstractions and conceptions. Waves do not exist. Force does not exist. The force is said of something else. Um, a shadow, a wave, force, countless other things. The notion that light is moving or has a speed. This is all ridiculous. Light by itself is only a concept. What is light with the, uh, the lack of energy unapplied to a light bulb or a laser or anything for that matter? 
We only speak of light in the sense of the release or perturbation of a field perturbation, excuse me. And this we're referring to illumination, but light itself is not a thing. Light is fundamentally, of course, a field perturbation or an ether perturbation. Is a disturbance in the hysteresis of the ether. The hysteresis of the ether is something you should certainly Google. You find a lot of abstruse information on that. Not a lot of it incredibly enlightening, but uh, the hysteresis of the ether is a fundamentally super important concept that is kind of beyond the kin of most people to wrap their brains around. But that's all light is, but light doesn't exist. We only know light by what it does, not by what it is. Um, that would be like Bob speaking about Bob. Well, we only know Bob if he's walking. You know, if Bob stops walking and he just stands there, then Bob completely vanishes from the cosmos, wholly and utterly. It's like we only know Bob if he's doing something. If Bob is just standing there, he vanishes from existence, poof, you know, like a fart in the wind, right? Well, that would be ridiculous, but that is what we think that what light is, and we talk about light, but we're never talking about light. We're talking about the attribute of a force vector, of a coaxial circuit, of an ether perturbation, which we call light, but which is not light, but actually illumination. The conjugate nature of reality, the torus and the hyperboloid, which defines force and motion, inertia and acceleration, can only be logically explained using platonic retroduction thinking methodologies to understand the cosmic mechanics that fundamentally govern the universe. And like I said, a magnet does not have a field. Everything we think we understand about magnetism is based upon thousands of year old observations of magnetite and other uh, 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 ferromagnetically coherent uh, objects that have been naturally discovered. And of course, we create them now, use our cell phones, computers, and everything else. But there's no such thing as magnetic attraction, or su no such thing as magnetic repulsion. A magnet doesn't have a field. Um, all of these absurdities are, are uh, will soon vanish, you know, if humanity is allowed to at least intellectually evolve a little bit more without destroying itself, which is probably very unlikely, but these things don't exist. These are reifications of absurdities as espoused by, you know, less than illuminated minds. And by that, I mean atomists and materialists who are mathematicians by definition, who call themselves scientists, but... To be assured, these are not scientists at all. These are people that only count things, they only believe in things and they can count, and uh, uh, for them to even think that they have any insight into field theory or cosmic mechanics, which uh, cannot be quantized, is of course where they completely screw up the picture and model of the universe that they espouse to others. We live in a cult of atomism. The Indians would call it the Kali Yuga but uh, is an era of intellectual degradation and corruption where, uh, uh, as Nikola Tesla said, one is able to think deeply yet not clearly. One may be truly insane. What was the exact quote? Someone's going to give it to me. I can't remember the exact quote from Tesla. He's basically saying you'd be a deep, a deep thinker yet, you know, a total fucking nut job. You know, you have to be able to think clearly to actually think accurately. I forget the exact quote from Tesla. It escapes you right now. Someone will quote it for me. I should remember all my Tesla quotes, but that one slipped my mind. But I think you got the gist of it. Lux Everitas. If you like these videos, you can always click the link below. I'm working on my book, the fourth edition, and which is not out yet. Everybody keeps asking me why it's not out yet. It's like, well, it's free. So what are you complaining about? Number two, it's not out yet. Working on my lecture for uh, July, which is quite a ways off, but, you know... No big deal. I mean, I could do that in my sleep, honestly. So thanks so much for watching, and good night.